Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD with my review of the Sapphire HD 7950, which is a video card upgrade for the Mac Pro. Now for those of you guys that follow the channel, you're thinking, wait a second, Jonathan, you do not own a Mac Pro, and Timmy, you are right. So huge shout out to Elric over at Tech of Tomorrow for letting me invade his studio, using his Mac Pro, and ultimately bringing this review to you guys. So I will have his channel annotated right here, as well as linked right below that like button, just in case you guys are interested in checking out some more new awesome tech content. Now as far as what comes in the box, you get both driver CDs for both Mac and Windows, and that is because this is a dual BIOS card. So with a flick of a switch, you can change between Mac or PC, which is definitely a neat feature. Do note though that if you're using Mac OS 10.8.3 or later, you do not need those CD drivers because they're preloaded into the OS and the video card becomes plug and play. This is for only if you're using something earlier than 10.8.3. Continuing on with the accessories, you get a DVI to VGA adapter, mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort adapter, two six-pin Mac power cables, and then obviously the user's manual. Now taking a look at the card itself, it is a two-slot design, and aesthetically to me, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's simple, it's clean, it's elegant. I would almost call it like a snow white color. You got a single sapphire fan towards the top, branding down the middle, and then taking a look at the outputs on the card, you have two mini display ports, HDMI out, and then a dual link DVI connector to close out the rear I.O. Now, as far as the specs go, you get an 800 megahertz core clock. It is based off the 28 nanometer process, which is huge because the aging 5770 and 5870 currently offered in the Mac Pro, those are based off the 40 nanometer process. So you're gonna get much better power efficiency out of this 7950. Additionally, you have 1,792 stream processors, a 384 bit memory interface, and most importantly, three gigs of video memory. Again, the 5770 and the 5870, those tap out at one gigabyte of video memory. So the extra two gigabytes here is really gonna help out, especially with so many applications taking advantage of video card acceleration. And for those of you guys who aren't sure what that is, essentially what it does is allows the program to take some of the load off of the CPU and then put that onto the video card. As far as the install goes, it was pretty painless. Now I will be comparing this to the 5770, so we'll first start out by taking that out. Once we got the Mac Pro open, we're gonna disconnect that single six pin connector. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew and unlock that PCI lock or protector, whatever you wanna call it. And then to the left of that, there's a little button you gotta press, then slide open. And then from there, we can take out the old video card. Now before installing the 7950, do make sure that the BIOS is switched to BIOS one because that is where the Mac BIOS is located. And then from there, before you insert the 7950 into the PCI slot, you gotta make sure you install the two six pin power connectors first, because if you don't, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to get them in there afterwards. From there, you can go ahead and carefully insert the video card into the PCI slot. Once you got it locked and loaded, you can go ahead and connect the two six pin power connectors like so. After that, we can go ahead and screw back on that PCI little lock connector again, whatever you wanna call it. And then from there, go ahead and close up the Mac Pro. Now, like I mentioned, I am using 10.8.3, so I did not need the video card drivers. Those are already pre-installed, but if you are using anything prior to 10.8.3, you will need to use those CD drivers before installing and booting up the video card. Now, finally, jumping over to the performance results, in OpenGL 2.1 performance, the 7950 absolutely smoked the 5770, more than doubling the frame rate performance. Next up is NovaBench, and for the graphics score, again, the 7950 completely outperformed the 5770, with a score of 474 compared to 282 on the 5770. Following that is Luxmark 2.1. This really showcases OpenCL performance. The 7950 absolutely destroys the 5770. It's actually a pretty taxing benchmark on your computer. It's a free download. I will have that linked also right below the like button. Next up is Ocean Wave, which again showcases the OpenCL performance on the 7950, which got a maximum frames per second of 566, compared to the 146 on the 5770. Now jumping over to Final Cut Pro 10, I definitely saw a performance increase for a one minute text render, but more importantly, for a one minute ProRes 422 export, the time jumped from 48 seconds on the 5770 to 40 seconds on the 7950. So if you multiply that over longer projects, you're gonna save a lot of time with this video card. Last up is Dirt 2, which is not new to the PC world by any means, but it does have a built-in benchmark, and you can see the 5770 scored an average of 35.4 frames per second. This is on 2560, keep in mind, not 1920 by 1080. I am running this on 2560 by 1440, 
and the Sapphire 7950 scored 53.8 frames per second. So there is a significant increase as well. So that pretty much wraps it up. If you guys did enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button as it does help the channel out. For those of you guys looking to breathe new life into an older aging Mac Pro, this is probably one of your best options alongside maybe a PCI SSD. Aside from that, if you are interested in picking this one up, I will have pricing and availability linked down below. If you have any questions on this or tech in general, hit me up on Twitter at TLD today or Google Plus or Facebook, along with also what I use to create my videos. So again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys later.